Howdy y'all, Fast Force 289, welcome back. In this video, we'll be working on my 68 Fastback and we're gonna be changing the rear release springs. They're old and saggy. And if you remember in one video that I posted a little bit ago, the driver's side one is actually bent. Don't know how it happened, but it's bent. So I figured that was a perfect good time to start changing them. Got the springs from Meet and Destroy Springs. So let's jump into it. All right, so this is the lease springs that I ordered from uh, Eaton Detroit Spring. I went ahead and painted them. I taped up all my surfaces here. I didn't want paint on my bushings and stuff. Get a nice coat of uh, black primer and then a nice satin black paint job. Really good coats all the way through. And then of course I taped up this here. I can pull that tape out and you see it's still bare metal in there because the bushing goes in there. So yeah, very good unit, nice quality. And you can paint leaf springs, but you don't want to grease them. Never grease leaf springs. Do not take them apart to paint them. You just want to paint them just as they are and then put them in the car. Here, this is an 11 16 We'll go ahead and pull all four of these nuts loose. We're going to leave it hooked up at the back and at the front. Pull this loose, jack the rear end up, and then we can pull the back loose and then the front. Okay, so uh, I kind of went ahead and got ahead of myself without recording it, mainly because I am impatient and have no self-control and too excited to see what happens. So I started going and taking these bolts loose, and I'm going to show you what happened. Now, the passenger side came loose, no problem. The nut came right off. The bolt never turned. It was fine. This side, on the other hand, if you watch, you see how the entire bolt is turning with it. Well, why is that bad? What it is is there's a metal sleeve inside the bush in here what happens a lot of the time is the bolt will seize that metal sleeve and if it breaks loose from the bush and it's turning in here well now you're not going to be able to just knock this out because the bolt in the sleeve is one so you have to take a sawzall blade and come between the bushing and the metal here and cut this out or cut the bolt out i mean on both sides then they'll drop the leaf spring down and get the bolt out I'm hoping the passenger side will come out so at least one side is easy. I said the nut came right loose and never turned the bolt, so we're fine. This one, though, is going to be a bear. I'm going to try to knock it out, but, um, yeah, more likely, I can already tell you, it's not going to do that. And you can't heat this up. You would think, well, you could just heat it up, melt the rubber to get to it. The problem is you can't do that. Uh, you might could, but as much rubber as in here, it would take you forever. You'd have to get this super hot to melt all that rubber and still wouldn't be able to get heat directly on the sleeve to break it loose. So really your only option is to come in here with a Sawzall blade and cut it. So just get you some good metal cutting Sawzall blades, make sure you got good batteries, and uh, it's gonna take you a little bit of time, but it will break loose. Okay, so for the back ones here, these are a 9 16 The front ones are a three quarter, by the way. So for these here, uh, this right here you got, you don't have a nut over here, it's welded on this side, so you just gotta take the nuts loose. This plate will come off and then you can just slide the, uh, the shackle clean out. So we're going to see, hopefully these will break loose. These are usually pretty easy to break loose. <clears throat> there we go. I went through and pre-soaked all these two in advance and they're still going to be rusty to get up in here so, and break loose. We've already established that this side actually came loose, luckily. Uh, it was opposite of how I thought. I thought this side being, it was turning there. I thought the sleeve was turning inside the bushing and I was gonna have to cut it out. But actually, for whatever reason, the bolt was turning inside the sleeve on this one. So it's gonna be a real easy disassembly on this side. As it turns out, funny enough, this is the one that didn't spin when I took the nut loose, but this is the one that seized in the driver's side one. Popped right loose. I just gave it a few taps with the hammer and it slid on back. So, 
how ironic. So I tried hammering on this, it will not break free. So what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try my air hammer and see if I can get it to bust loose. And if not, we're gonna have to just go in here and cut it. Okay, so we got both leaf, leaf springs out. We have to take this plate here off, we'll just knock it off with the hammer. I went ahead and took the passenger side off, off camera. And you can see here how I had to cut the bolt. That was a absolute pain to do because them sleeves are hardened and to cut through the sleeve and the bolt and all, it takes a while. So it took a while to do that. And this spring's in really rough shape. You can see how it's just rusted here. I mean, it's, it's really dangerous actually, but because them springs could break. So, so it's a good thing we're changing these. And then like I said, of course this one's bent. So I'm gonna knock that off of there and then we can get it cleaned up and get the other plate for the shock to uh, get it cleaned up, paint it and get the frame rail cleaned up and then get ready to reinstall it. At least the metal is still good in there. That's nice clean metal. Same thing I found on the passenger side. Clean on the inside, so that's good. <sighs> that rust just really digs in there on it. So if we're looking at these, you see the stock spring, how much higher it is than the new spring. Now the new spring is supposed to be one inch higher than stock. My guess would be that since the new spring has a higher spring rate and it's a little stiffer, it won't give as much so it don't have to have quite as tight of an arch. But the only way to tell is really put it in the car and find out. But I just wanted to show that comparison side by side. So this is all the parts we're gonna need to install the springs into the car. This is obviously the shackle mount here with the new bushings. This is the isolator pads that goes between the springs and the uh, mounting plates. And then of course the fresh new bolt for the eyelet at the front of the toward the front at the front of the spring so what i like to do is you don't want, don't need to do anything to these but these here i like to put a light coating of grease on here not nothing heavy just a real light coat to help them slide into the spring easier help them slide into the frame of the car as well as a light coating of grease on the bolt here and that's just so it doesn't seize up in that sleeve in the eyelet bushing in the front of that spring just a precautionary measure and what I'd be using, the WD-40 would work good for this. And really some anti-seize would probably be the best thing to use for this. But what I've been using is just some of this engine assembly grease. So like for this, I'll just get a little bit on my finger. And you just want a really light coat. And spread it all the way from the threads all the way to the head of the bolt. And then you want to do the same thing with these bushings here. Just a real light coat. I'm going to put our isolator pads on here. And this is the pad. You got one that goes on this side and one that goes on this side. And then you have these, this plate. This plate here goes on the back side here. And then the other plate where the shock mounts will go on this side. And line this bolt up with the hole in your pad. And we're gonna put the eyelet bushing in first, and then we can pick it up and put it in at the back. Just like so. And do not tighten anything down because you wanna tighten everything with the full weight of the car on it. All right, now we're on the frame rail here. There's bushings that we greased earlier. We're just gonna take and slide them into place. Now I'll repeat the same steps for the leaf spring as well. These bushings just slide right in. And they usually slide into the leaf spring easier than they do the frame rail, just like that. And now this is that shackle. We wanna put a little bit of that grease, just a light coating again on these shafts here. So you use WD-40, a very light coating of wheel bearing grease, just some kind of lubricant to make it easier. And as you can see, it's a very light coating. Like there's hardly anything there. And then this will slide in here and then into the car.
Right, now we got it all the way in. This top bushing, these bushings are hard to get in. If it don't go in all the way, you can put your plate on here and start running it down with a nut. It'll squeeze it in eventually. Take our other plate. And they're a 9 sixteenths. And again, you don't want to tighten anything down for sure yet until there's some weight put on the car. Then we can come back and actually truly tighten everything down. Okay, now we got the U-bolt started. Now we collect the rear end down. And now you just want to make sure that everything's lined up. You know, you got your the uh, yeah the dial pin lined up, and the bushings are sitting flat. Make sure they're not cocked in there any kind of way, front and back. All right, once again, you want to make sure that your pin is uh, lined up because your bolt for the leaf springs is in this rubber grommet, so make sure the rubber is lined up with this centering pad here. And we're just going to snug them down. You don't want to tighten them. You just want to snug it down evenly. to put the full weight on it but first i'm gonna go around i'm gonna torque all these now eastern detroit spring or eaton detroit spring says for a 7 16 u bolt you want 45 foot pounds of torque these are 7 16 so i'm gonna torque them to 45 but i'm gonna start i'm gonna go around and torque them on to 25 first and they say you want to torque them with the weight of the car on it so i'm gonna torque them to 25 and then come back you want 25 to 30 and then come back put the weight on it and then uh torque it to the, the uh, right specification. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna change my shackles out because I had these laying to the side and this is what came in the kit and I stripped one out and the metal on this is thinner than these here. And you see how the metal is thicker on these other ones that I got. And I got these from Eckler's Auto Parts and there's the part number if you want. So I don't know who makes Eaton Detroit Spring shackles. I doubt they're the ones that make it, but uh, yeah, they're not quite as good. They strip, they're stripped out too easy and the metal's thinner. So I'm gonna put these in there. Well, I noticed to show you what it looks like now that everything's installed. There's them shackles that I installed because they're better, thicker metal. Uh, the torque specs on those are about 25 foot pounds, but I just tighten them by hand good and tight. And uh, I drove the car 50, 60 miles or so, actually probably more like a hundred miles. and retorque these to 50 foot pounds. I added five extra foot pounds. The spec cost 45, but I just added extra five foot pounds just for precautionary measures and torqued it down. So that's good to go now. And also check this. I just tightened that by hand as tight as I can get it with a wrench also. And that's good to go. So stays nice and clean, works good, and looks good. So, Instead of just typing part numbers on the screen, I actually want to show you what all I got. So this is what came from meeting Detroit Springs. So this is the quantity you see is the front eye bolt with nut. That's their part number for that. The U bolts, which they, when you buy the springs, they automatically include the install kit with their springs. So you get everything you need anyway. But just in case you're curious, these are the part numbers, the front eye bolt, part number, U bolt, axle pads, and then the shackle kit, which like I said, I wouldn't even, I honestly wouldn't even worry about their shackle kit. They, they ain't that good in my opinion. There's a picture of everything. I'd go with the Eckler's brand of uh, shackle, which I already showed you that part number. And then this is how I ordered it. So right here is the leaf spring part number, ML 565 plus one. That means one inch higher than stock. You can get them up to three inches higher or three inches lower than stock. I went one inch higher. That's the part number. You see Ray spring right there. And that's what the price of each one cost. So there's that, shipping and handling. And then the install kit. And that's for that pad and the U-bolts and all that. And you can see there, that's included. 
Now, when you look here, you see that it says 1969 Ford Torino GT two-door fastback bucket seat 351. You know, my car is 68, but I have a reason in why I went this route, and I will explain that to you here in just a minute. So this is everything that you need to know for part numbers and all that in case you're wondering about that. All right, so uh, to explain why did I order springs for a 69 instead of a 68? Well, there's a couple of reasons. For one, their website, they have great springs and their website is really good, but they're a little bit off on a couple of things. For some reason, they would break down in detail all kinds of options for a 69, like two door fastback with bucket seats and all this kind of stuff. Whereas 68, they didn't really break it down. And they're a little wrong on a couple of their listings. Like the Cobra didn't come out till 69, but they had Cobra listed under 68 and nothing for Cobra under 69. So I don't know if they just got their information mixed up or what, but they didn't have details on the 68 model for some reason like they do uh, for 69. So I don't know why. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's the exact same car. Also, I don't know if it's true or not. I'd have to do some forum research to figure it out. But apparently, according to their website, 68 had a lower spring rate for both standard and, uh, I guess, heavy-duty handling than 69 had. 69 had a higher spring rate, all to, spring rate altogether. These springs I ordered, I believe they were a 138 spring rate, I think. I think that's what they were. I know they were 100 and something. I think they were 138. And then their standards were 93, I think. But they were trying to say that 68 standard was like 90 or 88. And then their heavy duty was like 112. So the 69s were a little bit higher. So I wanted some with a little bit higher spring rate. And these were listed as improved hand, not heavy duty, but improved handling leaf springs. So that's why I went with the 69 style springs. A little bit stronger spring rate and all that. And it broke it down. I got a two door fastback bucket seat car. And the reason why I chose 351 for the motor, that'd be 351 Windsor for 69. But my plan is to go with the Cleveland in the future, but I'm gonna have aluminum intake and head, so it'll weigh about the same as a Windsor and 302. So that's why I went with that. Um, also, just in case, for a side note, when I looked under, just out of curiosity, when I looked under the 302 and 351 Windsor for 69, it's the exact same spring, exact same, uh, a spring rate, exact same number of leaves, everything, same part number, everything's the same. So just throwing that out there. So it really doesn't matter if you order for a Windsor or 302, it's gonna be the same spring no matter what. Uh, how I figured out one inch. I'll be honest with you, I was a little concerned at first whether or not the stronger spring rate would be too stiff or if one inch higher would be too tall. And it actually worked out perfect. How I did is I have air shocks on this car. And I, what I did is I took a measurement of what I always keep it at and then let all the air out of the air shocks that had dropped down back to stock height, even though it was sagging. And then I figured that they've probably sagged about an inch over the years and I added an inch to it. So that's why I went an inch above stock. So, and it worked out perfect. The, I always keep the car at 26, which cause this one, the driver's side was being bent before. The driver's side was 25 and a half. The passenger side was 26. When I put these springs on without the shocks, being pumped up, it set at 25 and a half, even dead, dead on 25 and a half on both sides. So it's pretty much exactly where I like it. So what I did is, since I have air shocks for now, I may change them up in the future. That's what I wanna do is go to like a double adjustable shock. But for now I left the air shocks and I just raised it up to the 26 inch mark, which is about 40 pounds of pressure in my air shocks. And it's actually a good thing cause it kind of takes some of the pressure off the spring so the spring isn't doing all of the work. It has a little bit of assistance, which is always a good thing. Uh, you don't want shock or spring doing all the work all the time, obviously. So, so I just raised it up to the 26 even mark and now both sides are dead set at 26 even, uh, which is great because this car has never set that level since I've owned it, so that's great. It handles terrific. It is not too rough. As a matter of fact, maybe it's cause the isolator pads, you know, but this car rides great. Like you don't really even notice the bumps in the road. It is not too harsh of a ride. It is a great ride. And when you hit a bump, instead of doing that little Cadillac float like it used to do, now it's do -do like that. It responds great. And so it's, it's definitely stiffer, no doubt. I can definitely tell it's stiffer, but it's not like a harsh, rough ride. It's comfortable, so I like it. Anyway, I don't wanna ramble on too much here. I hope I answered all the questions and any concerns that you may have had about doing this. If you were thinking about going with your car, but you were like, eh, I don't know, should I do the stronger spring or not? I got the 138 uh, 
spring rate leaf spring, which is the, and they don't call it heavy duty. They call it heavy duty on their 68 side, but on 69 it's called improved handling. So I don't, I, I, for all intents and purposes, I guess it's heavy duty. But anyway, it's the improved handling leaf spring for 69 two door fastback bucket seat car, uh, 351 Windsor. That's, that's the part number I showed you. That's exactly what I have. And I could not be happy with it. I am very pleased with how it turned out. So, like I said, my only true gripe with their stuff is their shackle kit, and that's probably not their fault. I don't, I doubt they, because they do springs, I doubt they make their own shackles. Maybe they do, I don't know, but I doubt it. They probably order from somebody. So I don't know who they get them from, but they ain't, they're not very good, in my opinion. They work, they'll get you by, but like I said, I stripped that one out and I hadn't even tightened it. I was just tightening it down, it just stripped out. I was, huh. So it's a good thing I had them other ones on hand, otherwise I'd have to try to fix my old ones or double or a jam nut those to make sure they don't back off and all kinds of crazy stuff so uh that's my only gripe everything else their u-bolts their isolator pads the springs themselves everything is great I, i'm very pleased with it couldn't be happier so yeah if y'all uh, like the video give me a thumbs up i'd appreciate it if you're not subscribed consider subscribing if you have any questions comments or concerns leave them in the drop box down below and as always i'll get back to you and uh yeah so thank y'all for watching i thank each and every one of y'all each and every day i cannot tell you how much it means to me means the world to me so i appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one so take care